I named this image the Little Rock Candy Mountains. It shows the surface of a radiolarian, which is a microorganism that lives in the oceans and the surface waters. This tube houses thousands, and on a single surface of a radiolarian, you can see the Little Rock Candy Mountains from the image. So if you wanted to get to the Little Rock Candy Mountains, you would have to shrink yourself thousands of times. So we can't take a hike on the Little Rock Candy Mountains yet, but the next best thing is to take a look at them in the scanning electron microscopes at the Nuance Center. This is a scanning electron microscope. The first electron microscope was actually built in 1931 by Ernest Ruska and Max Knoll. And Ernest Ruska actually won a Nobel Prize in 1986 for building the first electron microscope. A scanning electron microscope can magnify your image up to a million times, which is much larger than what you're probably used to because an iPhone camera can only magnify four to 10 times. So this is a lot higher than a cell phone camera. Okay, so how does an SEM work? It all starts here, at the top of the column. At the top of the column is an electron gun. It generates a lot of electrons. An anode just below pulls all of the electrons off of the gun. Further down the column are a series of electromagnetic lenses. We can't use glass lenses like in light microscopy to focus an electron beam, so we have to use electromagnetic lenses. There are two main lenses found in the column. The first is the condenser lens, and the second is the objective lens. These lenses further pack the electrons together to form a focused electron beam that hits the specimen inside the specimen chamber. The specimen chamber houses the sample that you want to view, and the electron beam passes through the objective lens to hit the sample. A vacuum chamber is necessary. The vacuum clears the chamber of any gases that may become obstacles of the electron beam as it passes through to the sample. So the red surface is our radiolarian, and as the electron beam hits the surface, it kicks the electrons off of the radiolarian surface. The electrons that leave the sample are called secondary electrons. A special secondary electron detector inside the vacuum chamber has a positive charge which attracts the secondary electrons and transfers them into the computer. The computer produces the image one pixel at a time as it scans across the sample surface. When the electron beam hits the surface of your sample, many secondary electrons are released. The computer interprets this as a white point. When the electron beam hits the bottom of a pit, few secondary electrons are released. The computer interprets this as a black pixel. From there, anywhere in between, you will get different shades of gray represented in the pixels. So here are the Little Rock Candy Mountains. SEMs produce only black and white images. All the colors are added afterwards artificially. Kind of like filling in a coloring book. Right now, I am at 20,000 times magnification. This single sample holder has about 100 single radiolarians on it. The radiolarians are pretty small. They're about 100 to 200 microns in width, and that is about two times the size of the width of a single human hair. So this crystal right here is one of the candies in the Little Rock Candy Mountain, and it grew on the shell of this radiolarian. This particular radiolarian looks like a UFO, if that's what a UFO looks like. <laughs> they actually all are kind of weird shaped, which makes them so much fun to image. But this one in particular is pretty cool. I don't know if I would wear this hat. <laughs> SEMs have changed the way that science works. By enabling us to explore inner space with unprecedented clarity, modern microscopy helps medicine, electronics, and many other scientific fields grow in new and exciting ways.